here again in Chatswood. We come here quite often. This is ground that's been prepared in, in the prayer closet by God Almighty, the Holy Spirit of the living God is here today. And many, many people have been saved right here on this spot. And many more today will be saved. People will be healed. They'll be delivered. They'll be set free because this is the will of God. And we come in obedience to him. Hallelujah. So today, I'll just turn my microphone up. That's better. So today, we're going to be talking about the cross because the cross is the centerpiece of Christianity. It's the one that has caused people to have a way back to the Father, to be reconciled. Jesus reconciled everything unto himself in heaven and in earth. And he said many words, seven words actually, on the cross. No, seven words are important. You hear the heart of God in those words. You see the reason why Jesus Christ came to this earth. By the very words that he said on the cross. He was dying on the cross, but he was victorious. This is an amazing thing. Jesus Christ did not go out with a whimper. He went out in victory. And the words he said on the cross, there was words of appeal to the Father. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amazing. There were words of assurance to the dying thief. He said, today, you'll be with me in paradise. He was giving assurance, even though he was there, hanging on the cross, in agony, he was giving assurance. He was giving affection. Think about this. He saw his mother there. He saw his beloved apostle John and he said this is your mother this is your son he was speaking affection to them he wasn't thinking of himself he was thinking of them and the other words were words of abandonment my God my God why have you forsaken me God turned his back on Jesus he laid the iniquity of us all upon his son Jesus took the punishment and gave us his freedom his forgiveness and there were words of agony Jesus said I thirst he was thirsty and when he took that sponge with the vinegar in it he said the words of accomplishment and those words were it is finished amazing words and we're going to look at them a bit more closely and the last thing Jesus did were words of acceptance he said into your hands, Father, do I commit my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. So today we're going to look at, we're going to look at, it is finished, the accomplishment part on the cross. Tetelesai is the word. The Greek word, tetelesai, it means paid in full. That's the word. The translation of it is finished is tetelesai. And it's an amazing word in the Greek language. It's used in many, many different contexts. When a builder finishes a project, completely finished, everything done, he said, to tell us, eh? it is finished. When accountants, when a mortgage was paid, they said that word, to tell us, eh? it is done, finished, paid in full. When an artist did a painting, a beautiful masterpiece, and he looked at it, not going to touch it anymore. It is finished. To tell us, eh? This is the, the context of this word. When warriors went to war and they won a war. To tell us, eh? It is finished. Even the high priests in the Old Testament. When they took the lamb without spot and blemish and they laid hands on it and laid the iniquity of the people, the sins of the people and the sins of the priest himself on it. They shed the blood of the lamb offered it to God to tell us so. it is finished so this word is very complete it's like that masterpiece that painting when the artist is finished to tell us so. nothing more needs to be done don't touch it don't try and mess with it don't add colors to it don't change it it is done needs nothing more done and this is what happened on the cross a complete work done by Jesus Christ for us 
So what did do? Jesus came. There was a debt to mankind, a debt to the Father, a debt of sin that we could not pay ourselves. Jesus Christ paid that in full, forever. He eternally, there's nothing more needs to be done, nothing can be done, it is finished. And when he said those words, came to this earth, in 33 years, he fulfilled every one of those Old Testament prophecies, the foreshadowing, the symbols, the types, the prophecies. He fulfilled over 300 of them by his birth, death and resurrection. So Jesus came and when he said, it is finished, he had done the work that the Father had sent him to do. What an amazing thing he did for us. God did not have to do that, but he came, he fulfilled the works of the Father. He brought glory to the Father. He said, I do this to glorify you, Lord, and to save mankind. So why did Jesus come? Why did he come? Why did he die on the cross? Why did he have to do all those things? In Luke 19.10, said Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. He came to save us. He came because we had no way